Right, you guys got another video here for you. Should you enable or disable core isolation protection? Core isolation is a security feature of Microsoft Windows that protects important core processes of Windows from malicious software by isolating them in memory. It does this by running those core processes in a virtualized environment. And that's what we're going to be looking at today. So we're going to turn these off and do a couple of benchmarks and then we'll turn all of these back on and do some more benchmarks and we'll see what the difference is because a lot of people say that this really does impact FPS in a major way. So we're going to take a look at it in this video. So what also we're going to be looking at is the kernel mode hardware in full stack protection and also taking a look at any other settings inside here that we have like Microsoft vulnerable driver block uh, block list. We're going to be turning all of these off and then we'll turn everything back on and we'll do exactly the same benchmarks. Now I'm not going to go too in depth on this and do loads and loads of different benchmarks. You can read all about the enable virtualization based protection code integrity right here on Microsoft's website. I'll try and leave a link for those in the video description. So they go into great detail of what this actually does for your computer security and you can decide whether you want to turn it off or turn it on. Now, some people will go to the point of saying this cripples your operating system by having this on. I haven't seen that at all by having it on. I don't see much difference. Now, it may impact on some games worse than others, so bear that in mind as well. Everyone's got an opinion on things. Some people blow things out of proportion and they will say it completely hobbles the computer and you need to turn this off. Again, I've not seen major differences. Now, optimization for gaming performance in Windows 11, Microsoft have actually posted this on their own website and it's about options to optimize gaming performance in Windows 11 and it's talking about core isolation memory integrity and it tells you about turning it off if you want to gain a little bit more in, uh, performance. How much performance difference? Well, again, I think a lot of the people that are seeing a major impact on uh, FPS and gaming performance are people that are on old potato uh, machines, really old computers, uh, modern day computers. I really don't see a major problem by leaving the memory integrity on, if I'm completely honest. But again, uh, I've got a pretty decent modern day PC. I don't run, you know, a third generation Intel processor in 2024. But in this article, Microsoft say Windows provides a choice and control for users to configure their PC to meet the specific uh, needs, including the ability to turn Windows features off like memory integrity and VMP on or off. Gamers who want to prioritize performance have the option to turn these features off while gaming, but then turn them back on again when they're finished playing their game. That seems a bit of a headache to me. But this is the benchmarks for memory integrity off on the system. We'll run a quick benchmark with this software right here. This is a game and we'll see what the difference is. I will post these all up at the uh, end of the video. So stay tuned for that. I'll put them side by side so you can determine what the big major differences is. Now, this is not an in-depth uh, you know, test where I'm testing like 20 different games. I'm just going to do this one game and one benchmark software and that's it and then we'll do uh, the difference between the two now of course if you want to spend you know you know days upon days testing multiple different games just to get a result then that's entirely up to you i don't really see much difference myself but i'll go through the motions here and we will test with memory tech integrity off and memory integrity on on this system and we can get our base scores now i think if we get close enough to an idea of what it actually is doing when it's off or on. Like Microsoft have said, you can always turn this off and play your games. And then when you finish gaming, you can turn it back on and restart your PC and you'll be back to where you was before. That's entirely up to you whether you go through that palaver. But now we're going to run the same uh, benchmarks again uh, with the same software. And we're going to go ahead and do with memory integrity on now. I've gone and turned all of these features back on and restarted the PC. And we can now test to see what we're going to be getting with these on. I will put these close up to side by side and we can go through them in a second once the benchmark has finished. And we can then go through all of these together. 
What I find really strange is Microsoft released a feature that is uh, protecting you and giving Windows a lot better security than what it had in the past. And then straight away, people will complain about its impact in their FPS. And maybe it's going to impact it by, I don't know, 10 FPS, 20 FPS, maybe 5 FPS, maybe none at all on some games. But you have to weigh up the pros and the cons. Now, of course, if you're running a system that is really on low FPS, uh, you know, to start off with, then, of course, it's going to impact you a lot more than people that are blessed with plenty FPS. So let's take a look at the results here with memory integrity on and memory integrity off. We're getting 29,089 with memory integrity set to on. That's core isolation on. And with it off, we're getting 28,671. Let's take a look at the uh, stats here a little bit closer. So you can see in this test with the FPS minimum, average and maximum, it actually performed better with memory integrity on. Also, you can see the other stats on the screen as well. There's not much difference there. But overall, it did perform better with it on. But again, I would say that's probably within margin of error. The minimum FPS was 158.99.99 when it was off and in its minimum 179.97. So if the minimum FPS is important to you, then it's better to leave memory integrity on with this particular test. That could change with other tests. Let's take a look at Rise of the Tomb Raider here and go through this in more detail. Mountain Peak test was 174.85 FPS and it said minimum was 128.89 and the maximum was 199.01. With memory integrity off, it did sort of give us the same overall uh, score there, but the minimums is what changed. It changed quite a bit with it off. You got a lower minimum score and a higher maximum score with memory integrity off. Let's take a look at the next one, uh, Syria. You can see 165.97. And the other one was 168.10. So within margin of error there. But the minimums and the maximums are different as well. Let's take a look at those. So with memory integrity on with the minimum on Syria, we got 49.75 and the minimum was 49.45. So we got a really slight difference there. But the maximum was 182 0.86 and it was 183.71. So not much difference there to be honest all within margin of error let's take a look at the last one geothermal valley and you can see 136.37 fps when it's uh, on and with it off we've got 138.20 with it off now let's take a look at the minimums and maximum minimum was 96.6 lows medium and you can see 94.51 with the minimums on the other one with it off and with it Maximum, it was 182.64, and on the ons, it was 184.30. So no difference there. The overall score was 158.64 with it on, and 159.89 FPS with it off. So if that really means a lot to you, then by all means, turn it off. But there's nothing in it, to be honest. It's all pretty normal. And again, I've not tested loads of different games but that just shows you right there that the difference is not a lot with it on or off. And a lot of people are making more out of this than they really need to. But maybe it's affecting actual gameplay rather than benchmark like this. I really don't know because I don't actually see it or feel it when I'm playing games. Now, I'm not suggesting that it doesn't impact the system if you're playing on an older system. And I'm not suggesting that it doesn't impact the system if you're playing different types of games because it might do. But do your testing, and if it has benchmarks on that software, then test it and see what the difference is. And then you can go ahead and make that decision whether you want to temporarily turn it off while you're playing games and turn it back on for protection once you're finished, if you want to go through all that palaver. Now, if you're really restricted with low FPS at the beginning, maybe 60 FPS, and you're trying to fight for that 20 FPS drop or whatever it may be, then maybe turn it off while you're playing games if that's impacting you. But if you're blessed with plenty of FPS, then I wouldn't really bother turning it off at all. Just leave it on. 
Anyway, but that said, I think that's going to be about it. My name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. Just want to say a quick shout out to my YouTube members. I appreciate the support. I shall catch you in the very next video or I'll catch you on the Discord server. Bye for now.